What's going on, everybody? My name is Hao Vu, and this is the Hao Vu Moto Vlog. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today's video, things I love about my 2020 Honda CBR 500R. I have a video out there, things I quote-unquote hate about my CBR 500R, and I got a little heat for, for, for that video, and partly because I guess people stumble upon something like that, and, you know, they don't understand why someone would make a video pretty much hating on their own motorcycle, you know? It's just like, why did this guy buy this motorcycle if he hates it so much? Why is he so ungrateful? And um, really the reason is, you know, if you've spent some time on the YouTube motorcycle community and been watching some of these vlogs, um, and really a lot of people that own bikes and review them, a kind of a trend is the videos about I hate the things I hate about the bike, things I love about the bike. It's kind of clickbaity, to be honest. You know, people, it kind of catches people, you know, title like that, you know, oh, why, why does he hate it? I'm thinking about buying this bike or I have this bike, you know, what, what, what does he hate about it? So like it, it catches people's attention. I think when you're trying to gain um, a following, you know, sometimes you are a little clickbaity. Sometimes you have to be a little uh, kind of, uh, you know, I don't want to say deceptive, but definitely the title has to grab people's attention. I think that's a big way to get views. And I think, you know, that's just what I was trying to do, just following the trend. You know, I know nothing. I'm just, uh, sometimes I do what I see and I, I see what I like. So this is a long overdue video, things I love about it. You know, I've sung its praises in many other videos in the past, so I'm not even too worried about it. You know, I absolutely love the bike. But here we go to kick off the list. Number one, things I love about the bike, the looks. She is a beaut, no doubt. I love the looks. She's so aggressive but not like crazy, like too much going on, you know, very kind of timeless look. And it's just very, very mean, aggressive, super sport styling, super sport styling in a, in a beginner friendly, low displacement, affordable package. And that's just, that blows my mind, to be honest, you know, like it would be like if you were to buy a car that looked like a Ferrari, but had the performance and the affordability of a Honda Accord, you know, that's, you know, that's pretty much what this is, what you get when you buy a CBR 500R, I mean, in my opinion, right? Like, if you go out to buy a car and you want a car that looks like an exotic sports car, you know, you have to spend $100,000, $200,000 to get a car that looks like that. But in the motorcycling community, in Honda's case, you know, they're giving us something that looks just like a super sport motorcycle, pretty much looks just like the fastest motorcycle Honda makes, right? Super sport leader bike styling in a package that costs less than $10,000, brand new, less than 500 cc's, super economical, like very beginner friendly, like that's just absolutely crazy to me that, you know, people don't have to go balls to the wall to get something that looks great and to appreciate, you know, that design aesthetic. So, you know, big clap to Honda for uh, for that. I'm really, I really appreciate that. The next thing, the build quality and the value you know, like I said, um, it's not an expensive motorcycle, you know, in, in terms of the overall picture. And, you know, even though a lot of the parts are plastic, even though it has that carbon fiber, you know, faux carbon fiber look around some parts of the bike, that doesn't have to mean it's cheap, right? They still really care about the quality and the design that goes into their products, and they always have, and I really appreciate that. Everything feels very snug and sturdy and well thought out. You know, it's easy to assemble. It's easy to disassemble. Everything, like, fits in, into its place, you know? So it's it's very nice. Um, just because you pay a little bit less doesn't mean that you have to get less. doesn't mean you have to sacrifice quality so I really like that about the Honda Honda in general not just the CBR 500R the next thing I would say is the clutch lever it's the slipper clutch and they say that it reduces the uh, amount of force it takes to to engage it to pull it and they also say it mitigates the effects of downshifting when when the revs are a little too high so the, the back wheel won't kind of spin out or behave you know unpredictably and I haven't dealt with that part of it but just honestly riding every day pulling in and out the clutch like it's just an absolute breeze compared to the other motorcycles that i've ridden namely my cb300r and then the, the motorcycle you know that we used in the uh the msf course and it's just like light as a feather compared to those the standard clutch bikes um so that's been an absolute breeze. I'm used to it by now, so probably a little spoiled by now. If I were to go to a bike that didn't have that, I don't know if I'd be able to do it, to be honest, um, just because I'm so used to it. The next thing is the digital display. I think it's a very neat-looking, modern display. I think that even a lot of times the uh, the display on a motorcycle kind of like lags behind. You know, it, it looks kind of dated in some cases, um, especially now, a lot of the other manufacturers where it has a digital display, it's still that old grayish background, that grayish green, and then that boring like alarm clock-ish font laid up on front. And to be honest, it's still kind of that boring alarm clock font 
on the display of the CBR 500R, but it's kind of this inverted look where it's a black display and like bright white letters. It looks really cool, really modern at night is when it really comes through. But just, you know, the tachometer and, you know, the gear indicator and everything on there is just like really easy to uh, see and just all your useful information is right there. Just two buttons, you know, no frills, no thrills, easy to operate. And uh, I really like that about it. So that is a plus in my book, especially when you compare it to um, other kind of displays on the market. I think uh, this one, it, I appreciate that, that they threw in that digital display. It's just something little that, you know, a lot of people don't really care about. It doesn't really matter that much in terms of the whole riding experience, right? But just those little touches make a big difference for me. The next thing would be kind of the ease of maintenance so far. Just, you know, I think Honda is just like one of those brands where you can just basically, you know, if you just take a little bit of care of it, it'll take a lot care of you, you know, if that makes any sense. But I've done some, I really just did an oil change and really just like the location of the filter and just changing the oil in general, just dumping three quarts of oil in it, you know, not really having to like measure anything or thinking about anything. That was pretty simple for me. So just a no brainer there in terms of oil changes. And um, the seat height would be my next thing that I want to talk about. It's not too high. And I appreciate that as kind of a shorter rider. I'm about 5'8", right? And um, 30.9 is very manageable. And a lot of people getting into sport bikes, you know, it'll, you know, it's not uncommon to see a bike or even a naked bike, naked sport bike for maybe over an inch higher than 30.9, you know, over an inch higher than that. That's, that's pretty uh, substantial. So 30.9, I think it's very approachable um, for me at least. So I appreciate that. The next thing, probably the last thing I want to talk about today is the gas mileage. It's a very economical gas efficient bike, right? about 65 to 70 miles per gallon, that's really, really good. And, you know, to think that if you want to stretch it or if you need to stretch it, you can just ride more conservatively and, you know, get over 300 miles to the tank, you know, well over 300 miles to the tank. And I think that's really cool. I think the tank capacity is also a little higher than some of its competitors. I know for a fact that the Kawasaki Ninja 400 is around 3.6, 3.7. So this is almost a full gallon higher than that at 4.5. So, I mean, that's big capacity. A lot of people have said that this CBR 500R R is more of a sport tour rather than a dedicated true sport, like, you know, take it to the track kind of sport bike. And I absolutely agree with that. You know, a lot of people get maybe confused or don't know what to expect because they look at the bike and it just, it looks, you know, like a full on sport bike. But given everything else, the way it rides and, you know, the power delivery and the tank capacity, you know, it is, I think, more appropriately to call it a sport tour. And I do intend to take it down to Yosemite next week. So I'm very excited to do that. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. All the things that I'm loving about my 2020 Honda CBR 500R with ABS. Thank you so much for tuning in. Leave a comment, roast me in the comments, leave a like, leave a question, leave a video request, whatever. That space is all yours. Thank you so much for all my subscribers. Thanks for all the love, guys.